If you wake up and you want to truly live a religious life and you want to have the boundaries and constraints of a religious life, you're gonna be attracted to Islam. You're not gonna be attracted to Christianity. Nothing changes and nobody cares. And that is Christian's fault. So because Christianity feels godless and you do not feel God in Christianity anymore. And that's the reason that people are so attracted to Islam. That's the reason. And the Tate speaks on life after becoming Muslim. So let's switch. Rather than making this a part two, I want to make this almost a continuation from the last podcast. Okay. So if you remember at the end of the podcast last time, I gave you a Quran. Yeah. Now this is very interesting because at yeah. the time you wasn't Muslim then. Yeah, that's right. And now Alhamdulillah you are. Yeah. So first off, I want to say, welcome to Islam. Thank you. And secondly, what I want to say is, I know you've said a few times that you don't want to discuss Islam too much on podcasts. Yeah. And I completely understand that because at the end of the day, it's nothing to be ashamed of because yeah. we're all sinners yeah. and nothing can get anyone anything perfectly Absolutely. said. And even me being a born Muslim, and yeah. I'd like to say I have a vast amount of knowledge on Islam, yeah, yeah. regardless of what I say, there's still going to be people out there who comment back on what I say, because people have different schools of thought, etc. So what I will say is just like the quiz shows where you've got phone a friend, also, also the team are Muslim right now, so you've got phone a sheikh. So if you've got any answers, <laughs> any questions that you want answered on this podcast today from a fellow Muslim right here, thank you. or if I can't get the answer, we'll get the answer for you. Yeah, it's, I'm studying <clears> it, and I have a huge amount of respect for Islam, and it's one of the only subjects that I am passionate about that I don't know everything about. Mm. Everything else I'm interested in, I can sit and talk about for hours. Yeah. Or if I talk about Islam, I feel like there's people far more qualified than yeah. me. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's disrespectful because I'm new to it. I'm a revert and I'm trying to learn like everybody else. And yes, I'm famous and yes, I'm well known, but my opinion isn't valid compared to someone who's a born Muslim or yeah. studied it harder than I have. Exactly. So, hey, everyone's opinions are valid. Opinion. Of course, but yeah. I, I don't consider myself qualified. qualified. Yeah, fair enough. Mm -hmm. But how would you say it's shaped your life and your mentality? You know the best thing about Islam? The best thing about Islam is how simple it is because there's wrong and right. Mm. It's, it's a nice. simple religion. It's, well, it's wrong and right. I mean, you look at other religions and it's all so subjective now. Yeah. And that's why I've said many times on different podcasts that it's the last true religion. If you don't have a strong barrier, if you don't have a yes and a no, you don't have a religion. If you tolerate everything, you stand for nothing. And if you believe in God and you say, I believe in God, but I'm not a Muslim, I'm going to say, okay, that's fine. You're a Christian. What is Christianity anymore? What does it mean? You, you can go to a Christian country, and America, let's take, for example, and you'll get in more trouble for insulting George Floyd than you will for insulting Jesus Christ. Yeah, for sure. You literally, you can walk down the, t the, the, walk down the street with a t-shirt saying Jesus is gay. Girls barely go to church. If they do, who knows what they were doing the night before. Mm. None of it means anything. And then if you go and find a Christian that says this trans person has, has changed gender, what do you think about that? Christians are so soft, they're going to go, well, I hope he finds redeem, and I hope they, you know, he finds guidance. Haram, bro. Haram. <laughs> no, you didn't. It's haram. And I like that it's <clears throat> yes and no. And what's the point in, what's the point in a religion if you're too afraid to say what you believe in, or afraid to stick up for it, or yeah. afraid to, to defend it? Then what's the point in any of it? Mm. So I feel like it's the last true religion. I feel like it's the last religion on the planet. And it's kind of interesting because I've had, since I've my reversion, I've had lots of conversations with the right wing conservatives who were, who were upset by my reversion as if I cared. Uh, and a lot of them said to me, oh yeah, but you know, uh, it's a Christian country. We need to restore Christianity to England or wherever, wherever. And they don't seem to understand that the basic law of the universe is that power vacuums get filled. This is the basic law of the universe. If, if a tiger arrives in a brand new habitat and there's no other predators, it's going to destroy and eat all the rabbits and it's going to take over. Thanks. The, anyone who's in the West who's concerned about the spread of Islam should be more worried about the absolute fall of Christianity. The reason people revert to Islam is because they're looking for God and they can't find God anywhere else. Yeah. It's Christianity's fault for being so weak and I mean, decadent. Yeah, we were discussing this as well as a group earlier on and we were like, the UK majority of it is a Muslim you know, population. Mm. So it's gone past the point where it's now deemed as a Christian country because there's more Muslims than Christians in the first place. Wow. It's the Islamic Republic of Great Britain, and the great and the thing about it, and and <laughs> no, but the thing about it is, it's not even about numbers. It's about strength of belief. Mm. If you wake up and you want to truly live a religious life, and you want to feel like you have religious conviction, and you want to feel the fraternity of a religious life, and you want to have the boundaries and constraints of a religious life, you're going to be attracted to Islam. You're not going to be attracted to Christianity because you can wake up and say, I'm a Christian, and nothing changes. Yeah. Nothing changes and nobody cares. And that is Christian's fault. So I've had a lot of people complain at me as if, like I said, as if my personal choices are something I should... I mean, it's kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm self-analyzing as I talk here. 
it, I find it very, very interesting that Christians look at Islam as a threat as opposed to just understanding that it is a massive power vacuum because Christianity feels godless and you do not feel God in Christianity anymore. And that's the reason that people are so attracted to Islam. That's the reason I was attracted to it because I respect it. How can you, how can you believe in something you don't respect? Mm. I don't know. And that's, a, that's a, a general question for anything. You have to respect it. You have to look at, and look at the, the creeds and say, okay, I respect that. I respect how they defend their religion. I respect how they're black and white on certain issues. I respect all of these things. Also, it's kind of interesting because if you want to measure the success of a religion, you can measure it in regards to how many people follow it or mm. like you just said in the UK or how fast it's growing. But I think the number one measure of success for a religion is how well it preserves the sanctity of a society. I mm. think that if you want to say, is this a successful religion? Well, then you'd look at the society which it governs and say, are the creeds of the religion being adhered to by the society that it governs? I would argue that most Islamic countries have an Islamic feel. I would argue you'd avoid a lot of the LGBT garbage. Yep, You'll avoid yep. a lot of the woke insanity. You'll avoid, avoid a lot of the feminism, which has destroyed the West and all these things mm -hmm. because Islam is being adhered to and it's keeping the society functioning. Do I go to Christian countries and feel like Christianity are, is preserving them? Uh -huh. Not really. What about true hardcore following Christians? I'll give you an example. Obviously, you're just coming off the back of doing a podcast with George Janko. Yep. Now, I love that podcast purely yep. because you guys were talking about religion, you being a Muslim, and he, yep. he seems like, well, I haven't met him obviously, yep. uh, but a true following Christian. Yep. And it's funny because when I see a true following Christian, when I see a true following Christian, it's like you're so close to Islam, but you're just a couple of places where you're going wrong. Yeah. So when I saw that, I was like, shout out to George, because one day you never know, man could be Muslim himself. Well, yeah, it's kind of interesting. <laughs> Christians must feel a deep resentment towards Muslims, especially the true believers, because we stick up for what we believe in and they want to, but they can't because yeah. their own religion has become so woke and almost betrayed them. How can you stand up and say, I'm a Christian and I mean it and you better, when they have gay preachers. Mm. Like it's, it's, no it's, it's, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. And, your, and your fellow Christians will turn on you and call you a bigot. Your fellow Christians will call you a bigot and call you hateful for saying that a man shouldn't chop his dick off. And then you're gonna sit there and say I'm a true, True Christian. Yeah, it doesn't work. So all the Christians I speak to who truly believe, and I've spoken to a lot of them, they are very envious of Islam. Mm. And then I'm like, well, then what's the delay? Mm. But they feel like an affinity to Christianity because they were raised with Christianity or they're born Christian. And mm. perhaps they see Islam as a Middle Eastern religion, which is kind of interesting because Christianity is a Middle Eastern religion. Yeah, it's, they're from the same place. Yeah, yeah, they all spiral from the they stem from the same country as the Middle East. I read somewhere that only eighteen percent of Muslims are even Arab. I think the largest there's obviously a huge black proportion, mm -hmm. um, and Indonesia is a yep. massively Islamic yep. country. Malaysia, I think Islam just crossed over three and a half billion Muslims globally. Wow. That's more than half the population of the world. I, if you believe in God, I don't see how you cannot be a Muslim. I just don't see the attraction to any other religion that makes any kind of sense. And yeah. And you can also look at this, and this is why I'm careful to discuss this subject, because I don't want to get in trouble with people who know more than me, but you can also look at this from the ideological and the theologian standpoint in regards to what happens after we die and uh, superpowers and, super, and Allah and, and, and Muhammad, peace be upon him, and all these things that we don't quite understand, but you can also discuss it right here on earth with what you see, like I, dis, like I said about preserving the sanctity of, of a society. Mm. So you sit and say, okay, well... If you're Christian, how is Christianity saving your children from the oncoming enslavement? How is your Christianity saving your children from the slave mind programming? How is Christianity protecting you? How is Christianity helping your neighbors? How is Christianity preserving anything? Mm. Whereas Islam, it's kind of interesting because someone else said this who was smarter than I, and I can't remember where I heard it from, but they said whenever you see a post-apocalyptic Christian society in a movie, it's just the purge and everyone's out to kill each other. When the meteors hit or whatever and America's under attack, everyone, there's snipers on the roof and everyone's trying to get food and everyone's struggling. Whereas if you look at a post-apocalyptic post Islamic society, which exists right now, they're on the earth right now, they function and people mm. still love each other. And it's, it's the belief in God that keeps them together. I mean, there's no legal system in Gaza that's stopping people from committing crime. It's God, and yeah, it's literally. God alone. And then you sit and say, okay, well, the strength of that religion, even in the harshest possible conditions, can preserve to a degree the sanctity of society and human nature. 
I don't think a Christian country could do that. If you put a Christian country under the level of destruction Gaza's currently going through, I don't think people would sit and say, ah, well, Jesus says I shouldn't steal. In fact, if you look at what happens during natural disasters in America, it's the absolute opposite. It's just looting and chaos. What is a Christian country anymore? I don't know. What is a Christian country? A guy in America recently just got charged for a hate crime for taking down a statue of the devil that they had erected in a church. I'm mind blown. Like, statue they, of a devil in a church. A they put a statue of the devil Make in a that church. that one makes sense. He walked in there and ripped it down and he's being charged with a hate crime. So I feel like if I want to get conspiratorial, which of course is unlike me, but if I want to, I feel like- I'm God, all for it, so bring yeah, it. Well, well, God <laughs> is the final barrier. The final barrier- to the slave programming is always going to be God because there's a firm right and there's a firm wrong. They're going to come along and convince us all that the sky is green. And it's unfortunate because slowly they're going to win. Right now, we laugh at the fact that a man can chop his dick off and become a girl. We laugh at that. But our great-grandchildren won't laugh at that idea. Unfortunately, slowly they're creeping in. And the only barrier to this insanity, the final protection, is God. The book that says yes and no. Simple. So would so, you say, just a quick, I'm sorry to disturb you there, would you say the answer to getting out of that and being part of the group where we don't believe what they say regardless is religion? Oh, it is, but it's, it's only Islam. This is the point because Christianity is under such heavy attack now and they've watered it down and diluted it so deliberately. They've done that. They want to do it to Islam. They're going to try yeah, very hard, to. but it's not going to be easy. Yeah, it's going to be, be a lot harder. Yeah. Whereas Christianity doesn't protect anything anymore. There's no Muslims firm right and there's no firm that. wrong. Exactly. Yeah. So that's why Christianity is under deliberate attack because they don't want people to be religious because when you're religious, you're going to have a firm right and a firm wrong. Mm -hmm. the, the, the primary goal of the matrix and the primary goal is for them to get you in a position where you'll accept the slave programming regardless of what your own eyes tell you. That's their primary goal. Their primary goal is for you to walk through life with a mask on, full of vaccine, seeing everyone around you fully functioning and healthy and scared of a pandemic or walking through life and meeting a, a nice gentleman and calling him a man. That's what they want. They want you to ignore your eyes. So, and it's unfortunate, they've already got a huge percentage of the populace there mm -hmm. who will walk outside and see the sky is blue, watch the news and being told it's pink and look at it and go, oh, I must, must have made a mistake. Yeah, it's it pink. must have made a mistake, yeah. So that's their primary goal and religion prevents that. So they've come along and they've deliberately assaulted God and they've assaulted the Christian faith and it was a test for the Christian people to stand up and resist and they failed. So when they complain now about Islam conquering Western nations, I say, well, you failed. You failed. It's now a power vacuum. Power vacuums get filled. And anybody with a true heart and true conviction who truly wants to respect God is going to be attracted to the Islamic faith because you have failed. Mm -hmm. I don't want, bro, if you're going to go to war, which I just described, because war is nothing other than controlling of ideas. That's all war is. The reason we send tanks to some random field and blow things apart is to gain influence over a geographical area so we can Game control power, yeah. yeah to control the ideas of yep. that area so i just described a war to you it's a spiritual war but it is a genuine war if i'm going to go to war against satanists who are going to try and poison my children and enslave me who do i want on my team think about it you're about to go into a bar fight you want to roll with the with the g's or you want to roll with a bunch of pussies <laughs> it's a war and if every time i say to christians bro Look what they're doing to Christianity. And their answer is, yeah, well, yeah, I, I pray for them. Bro, no, haram, haram, it, It's haram. interesting. It's interesting because speaking about it now, everything you just said there is pretty much written in the Quran that there's going to be a war coming against the Muslims versus the rest in a sense of, well, they're going to try and take everyone away from Islam and try and do that. But obviously the true Islams are going to stay there. Now it's interesting because <clears throat> with recent technologies, what I've heard in Islam is that the way they try to do it is they want to combine technology with human to create the same power as God, yeah. right? Now, I look at things like, this might be a conspiracy once again, but the new Apple Vision Pro that's just come out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I look at that and thinking, so you basically want everyone to wear headsets out and about around the whole world and just live, that's, that's fully living in the matrix. In the matrix, bro, yeah. It's scary. And like I said, we will laugh at that, but as technology progresses and our children's children... You're right. People are going to be living in completely in a digital world with little glasses on. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. I've seen the Apple Vision Pro. I've seen some of the things it can do. I refuse to put it on because I have balls, so I can't. But if once they reduce it 
to, let's say, the size of my sunglasses. Yeah, then it's going to be scary. It's going to be crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So, and that's where technology is going. It's heading in one direction. And that's actually the most interesting thing because empires rise and fall. And we can discuss the, the falling of the Western Hemisphere at length. But usually geopolitically, as empires rise and fall, another empire comes and fills the vacuum as we talked about power vacuums. And I feel like this is the first time in human history where as the Western empire falls, which it is, it's going to be replaced with this global technological enslavement program. Yeah. There's going to be some server somewhere in Angola where no one knows where it is and it's going to control everything and everybody. And it's not just a matter of geopolitical influence waning and politicians falling and mm. things like used to happen before. It's actually a lot more scary. And the globalism is coming and it can't be avoided. And I guess it's kind of like gunpowder technology like this. You can't avoid its progression. It's going to be used. It can be used for good. It can be used for bad. Mm -hmm. How do you try and prepare yourself for that and counter it? It's super interesting. And uh, we need God more than ever, that's for sure. Okay. Well. Wow. I love the fact that this man is so eloquent. I love how uh, he was speaking facts about religion. And majority of the, his point on Christianity was true. It's true. I, I won't say no. No. Based on if I'm anonymous, no. He really said the absolute truth. I think that's the main reason why most people accept Islam because of what Islam always stands for. There are some things that Islam don't accept. They don't allow and they stand their ground on it and there's some things that you know they 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 are not ashamed to 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 to, to showcase for instance women wearing their hijab and the rest and also he also spoke about the fact that you know as a christian you know when they see that yeah 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 you are diverting or you are not living according to the ways of god they'll tell you don't worry we'll keep praying for the person this is but islam is not so there are some things you cannot do you can never insult their prophet you can never talk down on you know their their religion you know like he said says some people can you know use the name of jesus in the form of joke comedy and the rest but islam is not permitted i just want for that you know he big points a lot of things that are really going on in christianity that's why he had that mindset that islam is the only true religion because islam does not tolerate some things that christians you know overlook and accept if they are trying to backslide you know let them understand the reason why they should move closer more to god that's one thing you know islam you know does muslim do a lot and i love his journey towards islam even though he said he's still in the learning process so there are some things he doesn't like to say just because you know he doesn't have enough facts like people that were born as muslims it's like a wake-up call to christians that we need to do better as christians so and that's the most important thing that's one thing islam does that was a beautiful one let me know your point of view i'll see you in the next one bye